we are given a metallic ball and we have given a charge q on it and we need to find the force acting on one half of the ball so if we take let's say the right half of this conducting ball we need to find what is the force experienced by this half so we'll take our approach is to take a small element and we'll find the small area on that element and then we'll integrate that force over the whole region to get the total force on the hemisphere why the force will exist because of the on this element let's say there is electric field generated because of the rest of the sphere so that's going to push this element out so we'll have a small force because of that so similarly every element will be pushed out and we are going to integ integrate that now why half of the ball because obviously if you take the full ball the net force is zero so let's calculate the force so here we are going to use the concept of electrostatic pressure which we did in example 3.68 so electrostatic pressure on a conducting surface is given as sigma square by 2 epsilon so if you multiply that pressure by the area of that element you will get the small force df on that element so that's what we have written df is equal to electrostatic pressure into area is equal to sigma by sigma square by 2 epsilon into ds now by symmetry only horizontal components will remain so you can see that this component there will be an exact opposite component here so vertical forces will get cancelled out but horizontal forces will get added up so net force is integral df cos theta so this is the x component so df we will write here is equal to sigma square by 2 epsilon ds cos theta so sigma square by 2 epsilon is constant inside the integral we have ds cos theta now two ways we can solve it the first is the standard method which never fails and that is we'll take a small ring so here the element i have just shown it as a uh, like this but we can take the element like this also because on each part of this ring you can see that it is at an angle theta all those points on the ring so the force is going to be everywhere in the same direction the horizontal component on all the elements on this ring are going to be df cos theta so here the ds we are going to take as the area of this elemental ring which is pi sorry 2 pi r sin theta that is the circumference times thickness of the ring which is r d theta so ds becomes 2 pi r sin theta into r d theta, r d theta times cos theta so 2 sin theta cos theta becomes sin 2 theta rest everything is constant and we when we integrate this from 0 to pi by 2 this will come to be 1 which gives our answer as sigma square by 2 epsilon into pi r square now second method is we have a term of ds cos theta here so this is ds and in our uh, we have taken this angle as theta so if you take a vertical from here this angle is also theta which means ds cos theta is the vertical component of this area or the area which falls on this circle so this is ds cos theta and now you can see that if you integrate this ds cos theta for the whole hemisphere that will just get added up and give the total area of this circle which is pi r square so once again this is the ds which uh, if you take at any point on this hemisphere at an angle theta then it makes with vertical angle theta so ds cos theta is nothing but the projection of this area element on the vertical plane so if you add all these elements on this vertical plane the total area will be the area of this circle which is nothing but pi r square so you we need not have done this calculation and we can now directly write the force as sigma square by 2 epsilon into pi r square so don't don't underestimate this method because this is the standard way and we'll see in the next problem 
that this method will not work. So we'll have to do it with the standard way only. But in this case, this method works and we save a lot of calculations.